Welcome to the Biohacking Superhuman Performance Podcast. My name is Natalie Nidham. I'm a nutritionist, a human potential, and epigenetic coach, and I created this podcast to bring you the latest ways to take control of your health and longevity. We cover it all, from new technology to ancestral health practices, personalized interventions, and a very special interest of mine, peptides. Enjoy the show. Tonight's episode, well, it's kind of epic. First of all, it's tonight. So I don't generally record podcasts at night, but I did today. Uh, Today's guest is a very special guest. His name is Dr. Kent Holtorf, and he is... Well, he's a pretty big guy in the world of peptides. He runs a bunch of clinics. He is the founder of Integrative Peptides, and he has a bio. His short bio is huge. (laughs) He's the medical director of the Holtorf Medical Group and the nationwide Holtorf Medical Group Affiliate Centers. He's the founder and medical director of the nonprofit National Academy of Hypothyroidism, which is dedicated to to disseminating new evidence-based information to doctors and patients on the diagnosis and treatment of hypothyroidism, as well as advanced integrative diagnostic and treatment protocols. Um, He's into bioidentical hormone therapy. He's basically, this guy's all about solving for X when X is optimal health. He's into stem cells, immune modulating strategies, exosome, growth factor treatments. He teaches people. He helps to heal people. He's a fellowship lecturer for the American Board of Anti-Aging Medicine. I mean, honestly, this goes on and on and on. So I'm going to cut it short. I'll put some of it into the show notes. But suffice to say that our guest tonight shared some amazing information about peptides, amazing information about some of the conditions that he sees in his clinics. And of course, we talked a lot about the oral peptides that he is behind in integrative peptides. So they now have four different products. They have BPC-157, which of course, nobody disputes. Everybody knows BPC-157 is orally bioavailable and very effective. But we talk about TB4 FRAG, which is a specific fragment of the TB4 peptide or thymosin beta-4, which when you type the name of this fragment into PubMed, it is shocking the number of studies that come out. And because it is just this fragment and because of the process that they use, They actually have studies that show that it is bioavailable, although they're not able to share the full studies. Um, Definitely, clinically, what he's seen happen with this peptide has convinced him, um, in addition to all the evidence that they've gathered, that this thing not only is bioavailable, but it's extremely effective. They also have KPV, which is a very powerful anti-inflammatory peptide and antimicrobial. And finally, Cerebropep, which is a cerebrolysin peptide, and it's made to be orally bioavailable. And I can vouch for that one because I used it this morning and I don't usually feel nootropics much. And I can tell you that I definitely felt a difference with this one this morning. I'm going to try it again tomorrow. So I'll probably post about it at some point, but it's it's a thing. Dr. Holtorf is incredibly generous with his time and his knowledge. He was a pleasure to interview. We did go on for a while, um, but hopefully you'll get a ton of value out of it. And if you do, make sure that you share this video and or this podcast with your family, friends, anybody who you think would get value out of it as well. Make sure that you leave us a review on um, whatever platform you're watching this on. And if you have any questions, by all means, please leave it in the comments or you can reach out to me at natnidham.com. You can leave me comments there. You can leave me comments on YouTube. You can follow me on Instagram. Also, it's at Natalie Nidham. And in terms of Dr. Holtorf, where can you find him? It's going to be all in the show notes. And um, we give those at the... Um, at the end of the podcast, but I'm pretty sure it's holtorfmedicalgroup.com. And for the peptides, if you decide you want to give these orally bioavailable peptides a shot, you can go to integrativepeptides.com and use promo code longevity10, and you will get 10% off your purchase. And um, they ship pretty much 
They ship in the US and they will, I think, ship to Canada, but I'm not positive about that. We'll have to check and I'm sure they will let you know on the website. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening and enjoy the episode. Hello, Dr. Horltorf. It is such a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Oh, thank you so much. You're making me laugh. You're a big smile. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I, we've, only, we've only been talking for about an hour and a half. I know. It's like the whole day went away, but it, it's <laughs> great. Hey, I just, your podcasts uh, have been so informative. Uh, I feel honored with the guests that you've had and your knowledge base and how all your viewers or I don't know what you call them now. I'm old. Uh, you know, basically just get such a treat that, you know, you do all the work and spoon and just basically able to spoon feed them. And, and because people need to take an active role in their healthcare or, or you're screwed in today's environment with healthcare. So I, uh, thank you. And, uh, um, uh, bless you. You are doing an awesome job and your passion is just, uh, wonderful. Oh. So, thank, so thank you. And I'm, so honored to be on. Thank you. And I'm honored to have you here. I started the podcast, I don't know how many months ago. And I was like, I don't know, how will I ever get Dr. Kent Holter for this podcast? And here we are. So it's super exciting. <laughs> well, yeah, my staff screens everyone out. I tell people, call me. And I'm look, waiting for their call. And I'm like, you never called me. Like, it's screen me out. I'm like, firewall. Uh, okay. They're doing their job. So I ask this question pretty much of any guest that I have on who works with peptides, and I can't wait to hear it from you. I can't deny or confirm my answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I know that part. It's okay. You're safe here. Um, uh, how did you find them? How did you find peptides? Because you come from a relatively conventional background. Yes. And so... How did this world open up its, its doors to you? And we are all so lucky that it did, but. Yeah, and I think it's kind of the same way so many doctors that kind of enter the so-called, I don't know, the integrative, alternative, I guess, like biohacking better, I guess. But, um, you know, I was in through medical school and, and then in the residency, I was just got so sick and I'm like, there's something wrong. I can't function. And I'm so fatigued and just weird neurologic symptoms and brain fog. And, and so I go to the doctors at the university, like, Oh, you're stressed. You're a medical student. That's expected. And you're depressed. I'm like, I'm not depressed. <laughs> Something's wrong. And then like talking to like having a conversation was so exhausting to me. I'm like, I can't see a patient. It was just like, oh my God, this is overwhelming me. Or the phone would ring and just like, ah, you know. And um, uh, and, and then so I went, I uh, said, well, okay, what specialty is where you have, you know, the set time, time off. And I honestly look for the residency at the least amount of work where I could actually study. That's what I want to do anyways. So I found it, it was uh, anesthesia and went in anesthesia, but kept getting worse. And it was a bad choice because you got to get up early and beat those damn surgeons, you know? And, uh, and then I'm like, I, I got to do something because this is not living. And so I'm like, I'm going to sneak off to an alternative uh, conference and went and I'm like, Oh my God, we are told in medical school, this is quackery. Anything alternative means no evidence. This is more evidence-based than the stuff they're telling us, you know? And so basically instituted some immune modulators, t time, T3, uh, high dose saved my life, right, right then. Uh, other things totally helped, but hormone balancing, like I was the lowest 5% thyroid, low growth hormone, low testosterone, all that. And- And you were young, like how old were you at the time? Um, so whatever, like medical school, what is that, 23 or something like that? But but actually, all my life, I had um, weird issues where I would, one pupil was always bigger than the other. Uh, half my body would like just profusely sweat. My parents, we called them the sweaters. My mom would just drench in sweat. My dad had chronic fatigue syndrome before there was chronic fatigue syndrome. 
Um, I would have weird neurological, my left arm would stop working for weeks and they can't find anything. So, um, which I think is the biggest reason for Lyme is basically in utero, um, uh, you know, basically transmission. But people, if you just have Lyme or something, you're fine. But as soon as you get other things, you know, mold, toxins, stress, uh, age, where you're where your thymus involutes, now your immune system is getting worse and worse. Then you get, let's say, migraines. And then you get, uh, you know, uh, basically um, fibromyalgia diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, weight gain, you know, all these things, peripheral neuropathy, they don't know why. And it's really Lyme, it starts, it starts coming out. Then if you add like, you know, mold toxicity or whatever it is, then it really gets full blown. So, so that kind of saved my life. And uh, then I said, what am I doing anesthesia? No offense to anesthesiologists, but it's, it's mindless. It's like, That's everything's better. too safe. It's yeah. like, what are you gonna do? I think we'll put them to sleep, you know? And, uh, and, and so I left and then just uh, took over a family practice, converted to cash with this thyroid new protocol and started the national academy of hyperthyroidism a nonprofit uh thyroid association but uh then i'm like do we want to do medicine because i hated standard medicine it is it's just all money driven you can't do research and apply it because you're just constrained and start a beer company you know and you started a what a beer company a beer company Beer okay. company. Yeah. And we, <laughs> and, and this was, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and because I found the study on preventing a hangover. And so we came up with a hangover free beer and we ended up getting a, the biggest distributor in Arizona. We were in all the Cirque K, 7-Eleven, Trader Joe's. Um, we were in the um, casinos in Vegas and all that. And then the Bureau of Academic, uh, Tobacco Firearms said, cease and desist, you can't make a healthy beer. And so we're like, damn. And then, so we made an energy beer. This was before the, this was before all the craft beers. And we actually won a uh, bronze medal in the world beer cup and a silver in the world beer championship. And so we're like, okay, let's make an energy beer. And it was like, why do I want an energy beer? You know, now everyone knows it was kind of from my college days, you know, you needed up or down, but, um, and, uh, the problem was I made it a uh, IPA, which everyone hated then. And the biggest problem was no one would pay more than $5 a six pack. So at the time, and it cost us seven to make. So we tried to make it up in volume and it didn't work. You know, So if I was five years later, it would, it would have been good. But yeah, these days you'd kill it. Yeah. And so I was like seeing patients during the day and I converted the whole practice to cash just because it spent more time or testing, all that stuff. And then we try to sell beer at night, which is very humbling, by the way. Uh, and then so we end up selling it to Rock Bottom Brewery any, anyways. But and then I moved back here and started, um, uh, you know, basically doing treating really sick patients, the stuff that I did. And then this, this healthcare entrepreneur at the time, he had fibromyalgia, he went to all the experts that he could find for fibromyalgia. For fibromyalgia and didn't get better. Within two visits, he was like, totally better. He's like, what the hell are you doing? We need to bring this to the masses. So we opened up 22 centers. Uh, then I started nine franchises for all my sins and um, uh, started doing that. And then through that, I went through a stressful divorce. And when your ex hires Gloria Allred, you know, you're in trouble. And so, um, uh, and then all of a sudden I just crashed and I'm like bed bound. I'm just like sweating neuropathy. I have to get up 50 times a night because of just the, the neuropathy was so painful and, you know, no one, no one could help. And I'm like, I'm going to like, Oh, and then I went to heart failure and the cardiologist said, well, in 10 years, maybe 10% better. I couldn't stand up, up straight. I couldn't to walk upstairs. It would take an hour and just sweating, and I went around the world, basically, very slowly at one mile an hour, um, trying to find treatments to fix this. I did a lot of things. A lot of things helped, um, but a lot of things were a little crazy. 
And then I found peptides and started taking them. I'm like, okay. something's different. Like I did all of a sudden I'm like, I just walked up the stairs mm-hmm. uh, and I'm like, holy crap. So I was cameling them back from Europe for myself. I couldn't sell them to patients and um, because it wasn't, it's not legal to bring them back and do that. And then I was walking through one of the conferences at a company pharmacy was selling it. I'm like, oh my God, you don't experience I have in this. You want me to speak for you? Like, who are you? You know, but then I am being, you know, the, to be, everyone probably figure out, but their first speaker, and then it just took off. And, uh, and from that, it's, it's changed my life. Mm-hmm. And also it's changed our practice. Like, so, you know, we concentrated on Lyme and my, and I knew I had Lyme and Babesia, my blood was so thick, you couldn't pull it out with a gigantic catheter. Right. Um, and, uh, uh, in, 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 so basically, you know, we, we focused on that and peptides have just changed the whole core of our practice from, we tend to treat the sick of the sick, but we can also treat, you know, hormone replacement or just, you know, stuff. Uh, so, that uh, just uh, basically started doing that, doing doing more peptides because now now that they were available, and we used to be like for Lyme disease, essentially Horowitz, amazing amazing doctor, super high dose, you know antibiotics. Uh, you know, I was doing seven to ten antibiotics at a time, way more to give a patient at three times a dose. I did that the three times, uh, three times the max dose, uh, never give a patient and never got better. And then I did the peptides and found all of a sudden, Oh my God, this is working because like my natural killer cell function, which is the TH1 cell that monitors the body for the cellular infections was zero most of the time. Right. So with antibiotics, you never kill everything, right? It knocks it down and then your immune system takes over. But if your immune system's down here, Mm -hmm. you're never going to get there. So we found that we can go from point A to point B. We use antibiotics, but instead of three, five years, we use three months, you know, Mm. and all of a sudden everything started working because now my immune system came back. Uh, The inflammatory, I mean, I couldn't remember anything. Uh, uh, When I would, you know, sit there going out was just a chore and uh, we go to dinner with someone and my girlfriend would say, oh, I remember da da da. I'm like, I've never heard of my life. I've never met him. Like we had dinner with them yesterday, you know, and, and it, it gets, it gets scary, but, yeah. and, and then I said to God, and I'm not real, I'm not religious. I'm kind of more atheist than anything, but I know God's a woman because she hates me. But um, uh, I said, take everything, please. But, just make me better. Cause when you, it doesn't matter how much money you have, if you feel horrible, you can't use it. She kept up, she kept her word. When your ex has Gloria Allred, who actually ended up being not tough enough for her, then <laughs> she got the, the woman cover power woman attorney magazine. So it took everything, but I, I didn't care because look, I feel good. I can function. That's so much more important. So then we started incorporating peptides and doing this integrative stuff, which if you asked me in medical school and residency, say that's quackery, you know, less doctor knows, the more adamant they're right, that you're just a quack and, and, and all that. And just, and it's really nice to go back to what really being a physician should be, read the research, apply it to your patients. Unfortunately, medicine in this country is going towards algorithms, you cannot do this because we say you can't, doesn't matter what the research shows. And now Google's the arbiter of medical truth, which is absurd. Um, but so peptides have been probably the biggest uh, difference in, in my life. Like it sucks not to breathe. I don't have heart failure uh, anymore. I went in a year later, less than a year and said, and he goes, your heart's normal. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, oh, that's nice. Like, did he ask me what I did? No. <laughs> so so uh, let's go, let's, let's talk about the peptides a bit. So what is it? And I, and I kind of know a little bit of the answer here, but you, you already talked about it, but can we just go over a little bit for the audience? Like, what is it about these peptides 
that is so magical. And when people ask me that question, I talk about how the peptides help the body to do what the body does. Like to me, it's like their, 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 their ignition fluid sort of, they don't, they don't do, they, they enable, they, they flip switches in the body. They act as signaling molecules. They turn on cascades. And you were just talking about the immune peptides that, that re activate the immune system so it can even begin to start to function like it was supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. So think about it. You know, if when you look at the way the body works, we think of, you know, signaling, it was kind of like hormones, especially when bioidentical hormones came out. Okay. That controls everything. And they're, they're very epigenetic. They go into the cell, work on a nuclear receptor. Um, And, but what they found is peptides are a layer above that. And they fine tune everything. Mm -hmm. And so they're more tissue specific, although they can be broad, broad, but it's for instance, like BPC, you know, it, it's very homeostatic. If you have high blood pressure, it lowers it. If you have low blood pressure, it raises it. If you're hypercoagulable, it reduces coagulation. If you can't clot, it raises your ability to clot and lowers the bleeding time. And so they kind of put the body back in homeostasis. Yeah. And so if you're to fish, they're kind of like a smart med. And the nice thing is they're so safe. I mean, they can't find a toxic level. Yeah. For instance, with BPC and TB4, TB4 frag, they they basically stop. They give a thousand times the usual dose. And actually the peptides even work at a hundred to a thousand times less than that at tiny doses. Um, they can't find a toxic level. Yeah. You know, you, you, so you can't do that with any med. You can't do that with water. Yeah. And so it's like safer than water. So they bring things back. If you don't have a problem, it's not going to do much. You know, I mean, most people with aging and we can talk about the thymus and how that really yeah. causes a lot of problems, but um, like with like the TB4 frag, it, it brings back, your age because it fixes the the thymus and it's kind of been ignored a number of papers you know just so so as you age right about you know age 20 your thymus which modulates if you think of uh, two things th1 gets stuff inside your cell uh goes along with treg and then th2 gets stuff outside the cell and you see they're balanced yeah. And as you age or you're stressed or if you have chronic infection or pesticides, plastics, autoimmunity, your TH1 goes down. So you can't fight intracellular infections, mm-hmm. but your TH2 goes way up, which your body's trying to kill it extracellularly, which increasing inflammation, mitochondrial dysfunction, which then causes actually um, hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction. So your hormones are low and your thyroid's low, but you, know, you can't clear that infection and you're stuck and EMFs do the same thing and all these toxic pesticides. So the key is, is for instance, the, the thymocins will modulate that. They'll raise that TH1, lower that TH2, and then like BPC lowers the, the TH2 and a mast cell inhibitor and it lowers the inflammation and a mast cell. Like everyone is inflamed like crazy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at parties now, it's like, you know, people come up and they're like, like everyone's sick. It's either them or their family member, kids. And you never saw this before. And it's also multi-system disease that they've been to multiple doctors and when we did the, when we had 22 centers, we did a peer reviewed published trial on 500 consecutive patients and basically with multi-system disease and um, like 82% got sick better by the fourth visit, 68% substantially. And they saw 7.2 physicians before seeing us without help. Now I think it's like 15 uh, that we see and everyone's much sicker. Yeah. And, and so it's our system is made for, okay, you broke a leg, you have X, it puts you in a box. If you don't fit in a box, you're going to get terrible care Mm -hmm. because you're going to get turf from one doctor to another. So you got to find a doctor that's going to be able to treat all these things. 
Well, and I think that what's interesting about that is what you said about the peptides earlier is because particularly with the BPC-157 and the thymic peptides, because they, they strive to bring the body back to homeostasis, when you've got these really complex, you know, when you've got multi-organ problems, like you've got multiple diseases, you've got all these complex situations, if you can start to bring some balance back to the body, it probably makes it, because I mean, I, I you know, I, I coach people, I, I send those people to people like you, <laughs> <laughs> but I would imagine that the peptide starts to level the playing field so that you can almost start to see your way through and say, okay, here's what might be going on here. It starts to kind of get the dominoes falling in a way that it clears the way to start to be able to help people because they help that the body just start to, to come up a little bit and function. Yeah. Yeah. You get, basically we start everyone on BPC and TB4 frag, and then KPV is coming in as a huge player. Um, and then we have the cerebral pep too, but, um, and we're finding, we're really an immune modulatory clinic. And you look at what is the common denominator of all these multi-system illnesses, aging, neurodegenerative diseases, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, uh, is immune dysfunction, mitochondrial dysfunction, um, you know, a, excessive uh, oxidation, and then they get hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction, all their hormones are low, and everything's a vicious cycle. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. So it's kind of where you break that vicious cycle. And, but our system is not made for that, uh, the standard system. So yeah. you got to find a doctor that treats all those different areas. And it's difficult and it gets expensive because, you know, when you go into a doctor, you have one problem, but, you know, you look at, you know, mast cell activation syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome, Lyme. When I say Lyme disease, I mean more of a syndrome because it'd be a bunch of different things and Sears and um, all these things. And, but they all, when we do a, a, a lab, let's say we do like 35 just standard tests. Uh, I'd love to do all these um, you know, specialty tests, but they, it costs a lot. And these are expensive illnesses because you're treating so many different systems. And the, of course, the phlebotomists hate us because, you know, we use standard labs as much as we can. And I went and did my own and she's like, oh, this is that doctor that orders all these labs. Like, I don't know if he's a great doctor or the worst doctor ever, you know? And like, I, I don't know, but I heard he's a super cute, you know? Uh, but uh <laughs> And then, and then she goes, Oh, I got to get your natural killer cell function test out right now. I'm like, Oh, I'd like to hear that. And of course she forgot and left it in the package. But uh, so, um, you know, it's, it's getting a painting a picture and not hanging your hat on any one test. And you go to, you know, all these HMOs and even the PPOs, they are basically, um, uh, you know, they'll get bonuses for the least that they do. And they'll say they promote cost-effective medicine, which means if you don't do any tests, if you don't make any diagnosis, if you don't give any medications and you're very cost-effective, you will make more. You can see more patients, you know, and now the average visit is like 12 minutes. I mean, it takes me 10 minutes to say hello. Um, and they just give me antidepressant, get them out. If they do less labs and, and people say, you know, oh, uh, or with like fibromyalgia, uh, which is, I think, done such a disservice in chronic fatigue syndrome. It's, you know, one's based on symptoms, one based on 11 or 18 tender points, which have nothing special. It's like, do you have muscle pain? Okay. And then some sleep disorder or post exertion fatigue. Okay. You got, you got fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome. But, um, it's allowed doctors to say, well, we don't know what it is. Nothing we can do here. Take um, antidepressant and some gabapentin and we'll see you in six months. And said, so there's a cause, <laughs> you know, there's a cause every time. Uh, is it the it's, same cause or is it, do you see like certain specific causes come up over and over again for these? Yeah. And, and you look at all these conditions, they tend to be all infectious. You know, autoimmunity. I have not found an autoimmune patient who it's not infectious. And, but if you don't check and they'll say, oh, the lab's 
show nothing. You do a CBC, a chem panel and a cholesterol and say, oh, your cholesterol is high. You need a statin, like the last thing you need. Um, but really it's typically a bacterial or a parasitic infection that's suppressing that Th1. And now all these other viruses are coming out. And so for a while it was the you know, virus of the month club, like, okay, this is causing chronic fatigue syndrome, da, 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 where sometimes we'll treat them because they'll come out because low Th1 and, but they have like five of them. Okay. how did they get five viruses? Um, but those end up suppressing the immune system. Sometimes you have to treat it um, just because it, it's contributing, but it's really finding that underlying uh, infection, which is often Lyme, um, or we're finding more and more, it's, it, it, it's basically um, uh, the uh, you know, recurrent um, uh, febrile Borrelia, which most tests don't test for. The Borrelia, oh, so the, it's an actual bug. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a different form of Borrelia, but they, they don't test for it, but it's, it's probably causing more so-called Lyme than, than you know, Borrelia burgdorferia. So how, and, do you, how do you find it? Uh, the place they're doing, I know Igenix is doing it. Um, I think DNA Connections has it on theirs. And the thing is, so we can, when we do our initial panel, we can pick out who has these multi-system illness um, and how bad it is 70, 80% of the time without talking to the patient. Interesting. Just and doctors that. say, oh, there's no tests that show it. You know, mm -hmm. the patient's just crazy. Go to the psych consult. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah um, uh, I was biking out a, 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 a relapsing fever. Okay. So interesting. And so, but you're finding that peptides make a huge difference with those people as well. It, like you're you're it, using the, the antibiotic, but you're finding that with the peptides, you're just, first of all, you need less of the antibiotic and the body itself kicks into. We use amazingly small amounts of antibiotics. That's awesome. Because I, with all these chronic, I don't think you ever get rid of the bug. Mm -hmm. it, well, they're opportunistic like from the sounds of it, right? Yeah, it's kind of like chicken pox. You say, oh, I'm over the chicken pox. Well, not really. As soon as you get older or stressed, you know, it comes out uh, shingles. Yeah. Uh, if you want the stupid shingles vaccine, check your immune system. Also, those are the same people that are going to have a huge problem with vaccines. So you want to check that. So their low TH1, TH2 vaccines jack up that TH2 and you get all these symptoms and uh, which may or may not be temporary. Right. And so, so you haven't mentioned thymosin alpha one and I found thymosin alpha one is a nice, it's often a nice way to start people. And I guess from what you're saying, thymosin alpha one bumps up the TH1 in so many people that's where they're low. So it kind of brings back balance. It's like the omega-6, omega-3 ratio. You never find someone who's too omega-3 and too low in omega-6. Yeah. It's, it sounds like, you know, people seem to present low TH1, high TH2 like, in general. Like almost everyone to some degree, but the sicker the person, the worse the dysfunction. And just as a base, so if you think about thymus and alpha-1, Proved in 33 countries for everything from infections, cancer, um, you know, uh, multiple things. But here, the FDA yeah. just said, essentially, you know, reading between the lines, thymus and alpha one is working for COVID. Uh, we will no longer allow you to produce it. And is that because they're protecting the pharma company that produces it as a Daxin? Oh my God. It's, it's so like that. If, I mean, we can, uh, I can tell you all no, the we're backstory. Not, we're not doing I, that. No. I know. <laughs> I talked to a person who worked with Fauci. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, anyway, so uh, yeah. So think of uh, thymus and alpha one boosting TH1. Think of TB4, boosting TH1, lowering TH2, 
think of BPC is lowering TH2 and mast cells and, and all those, and then KPV as well. So uh, yeah, they're going to ban thymus and beta four, but we have the frag uh, out. But so, uh, so let's talk about the frag because, and and actually, that's this is a part. This is a topic that is really important to me because we've been told. I mean, you know, the, the general consensus is that for the most part, the only peptide that's really bioavailable that's not going to get broken down in the gut that you can take orally is BPC-157, which, which integrative peptides has a BPC-157 capsule that I've used extensively that is, it's, a, it's like a miracle. First of all, it's pop a pill. Nobody has to, you don't have to teach them how to reconstitute peptides. There's, there's no it's like here. No I'll alcohol, take so I hear, take, take two a day. Sometimes take three if you need them, but you know, you just have to take a pill. But You've now, with integrative peptides, you guys now have FRAG TB4, which I didn't know anything about until I looked it up, this ACSDKP, which you punch that into PubMed and the stuff that comes out yeah. just blow your mind. Yeah. It's all about the heart. It's about protecting the heart from radiation. It's, it's like, it's, it's incredible that the spectrum, not to mention the fact, and you know, Canary in the coal mine here. I can't use TB4 because it, I have such a massive histamine response. It suppresses, it, it stabilizes mast cells. It suppresses yeah. the mast cell storm or whatever we want to call it. And yet it's in a capsule. So yeah. let's talk about that a little bit because we've got that one. We have KPV now, which is a major anti-inflammatory peptide. Love it because it's one of those little three amino acid ones and those 10, the tiny but mighty ones, right? The littlest peptides seem to be the most powerful. Yeah, we have a number of them coming out, small, very short peptides that I can't believe that they're effective. Like, what the hell? But interesting, I was looking up the um, mechanism of action of some of these super short, um, deviating from the question, but yeah. Um, of these like bipeptides. So like two amino acids, like there's no receptor, what's going on? One study showed it's harmonic. And then my second thought was like, wait a minute, what does EMFs do to that? Yeah, what does EMFs do to that? Yeah, so, but some, some interesting stuff that we're coming out with, that we're working on, we're, you know, we're I'm big in bioavailability. I mean, bioavailability, People are throwing stuff in trochees and just making people believe they're absorbing or maybe whatever these company pharmacies think like, oh, let's put it in, you know, as a, as a, as a trochee. And I was actually at uh, a conference and one of the lectures was, oh, yeah, everything absorbs sublingually. I'm like, no, that's not true. <laughs> um, but um, so a TP4 frag, yeah, so it's, it, it, it's basically the short end of thymus and beta-4. So thymus and beta-4 has multiple, they call it domains. So it's 43 amino acids, which it's been deemed a biologic because it's more than 40 amino acids. Like it's surprising they picked that, you know, that number. Yeah, shocking. Yeah. But so it has different things that do different uh, things. But the um, uh, end terminal portion has the immune modulatory effects, anti inflammatory effects. Um, you know, basically, it's the workhorse of TB4. And the studies show it absorbs whole. And so, like, if you look at BPC, BPC, the studies show it's equal potent given orally than if you give it subcutaneously or, or systemically for systemic illness. And we love at the conferences, we have little packets and we see someone like limping or, you know, their leg. And uh, in fact, my girlfriend's doing a conference and the head of the conference being really unreasonable. And she goes, hey, you're limping. Let me give you this. She comes back down the next day and goes, oh my God, my, <laughs> my knee pain's gone. Like whatever you want, you know? And so you can't seeing, believe, I mean, sorry, we so you're see seeing as powerful effect, even for musculoskeletal issues orally as you do systemically. Um, absolutely. Huh. And, and the studies show that like okay. multiple, multiple studies. And now we'll find sometimes people find 
they try the injectable, it didn't really work, and they do the oral, it works, or they try the oral, then the injectable, whether it's, you know, whatever their system or, or just, you know, psychological. But oral BPC also is great for the gut-brain access mm -hmm. because it's both fixing the, you know, basically the brain. Like there's one study where they did at the same time uh, did uh, basically – uh, inflammatory bowel disease, like ulcerative colitis and MS. And they gave it orally and it worked great on both aspects. So the you know, studies show that, that it's equal potent, same with the TB4 frag, it absorbs whole. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about 10 times as potent per weight. Uh, you know, again, it absorbs whole much more antifibrotic, um, anti-inflammatory does not stimulate mast cells. So there's one domain in TB4 that stimulates mast cells. Mm -hmm. Now, when you normally give TB4, it's normally not a problem because um, on the mast cell mastermind group, and these are the smartest, geekiest people ever, and that uh, that's a compliment. Um, and they're one. just stuck on directly inhibiting mast cells. Yes, do that, but look up stream mm -hmm. and so have all these powerpoints that show that it's much more effective because you change that th1 th2 which uh you know stimulates uh mast cells um for instance the frag that we're using is one thing it doesn't do it doesn't grow hair but there's another fragment that does and uh it crosses the blood brain barrier much better it's very antimicrobial and the other frag or your frag the what the other frag or the one that you've got? Uh, yeah, the, this frag. Um, yeah. But okay. there's not a ton of studies, but every study they have shown has basically shown, you know, outperformed a cycle of error against herpes at 100 the dose, but no one's gone on to do more studies on it. And like KPV, which is kind of the same thing with alpha monocyte stimulating hormone, a lot of people use, um, you can't use the alpha monocyte stimulating, it's so short acting half, half life, very expensive, like melanotan too, and things like that, that it's very anti-inflammatory. People use it for Lyme, but then if you're older, it, you know, you get tan, but you get dark spots and things like that. But the KPV has, is much more potent anti-inflammatory, suppresses mast cells more than anything I've ever seen, wow. um, is orally bioavailable and, and all these, which is interesting, get into biofilms and they're all antimicrobial. And you can't believe like they did studies on KPV against Candida, um, against uh, staph and just blowing antibiotics away. Um, also on, uh, let's see, TB4 and the cystic form of Lyme more potent than tinidazole really? and, and much safer. And also like will prevent, you know, basically they uh, protect the liver and, and things like that. Uh, and they suppress human uh, transferring growth factor beta, which is like what we measure TH2 and then probably correlates with symptoms as well as anything um, and causes fibrosis and, and, and so many problems. And it's, it's weird. Some studies call it anti-inflammatory. I'm like, what? Um, which is crazy because you look at cytokines and the same cytokines, some, because some studies will classify the cytokines as what is basically producing them. And the other one classifies them as what they're acting on. So you're like, wait a minute, is this anti-inflammatory or is it inflammatory, you know? And the same thing when I did the review, the bioidentical hormone debate on, uh, you know, which included progesterone versus progestins, progestin cause cancer, progesterone is the best way to prevent cancer, is the studies will call progestins progesterone in the title, Yeah. you know? And and so uh, it it's, it's crazy. But BPC, okay, why is it that? big and why does it absorb? And while well, there's a, a rule and we have a software program that helps us because it's very hard to figure out some of the uh, rule of five. 
So the rule five, the one that's easy to remember, less than uh, 500 Daltons, yeah. much better chance. But you need, uh, let's see, no more than five hydrogen bond donators, no more than 10 hydrogen bond acceptors. Uh, a big one is the octagonal water coefficient. You need that less than five. The number of atoms in it um, between seven and 20. But then there's a, an exception, which BPC follows under, which is, um, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, 10 or fewer rotational bonds. Okay, how is someone going to look something up and see that? And and then- I remember that and, from organic chem, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, but what BPC seems to do, the way it folds, that it has the, because uh, the problems, the peptides are, are generally very lipophobic, hydrophilic, meaning they like water. So yeah. they dissolve in water, which is good, but it makes them, they get up to the mucus layer and they're basically repelled. Right. And the so, uh, yeah. yeah, so the polar surface less than 140 angstroms squared. And BPC makes that. So BPC is, a, is an exception. So we run the peptides through that and it gives us an idea of which ones to spend the money on to see how we can make it absorb. And even then you need to do some things to make it absorb. And, and I think we talked before, like the oral GLP one, yeah. um, you know, which is, you know, for diabetes, it absorbs 1%. And, and, and it's incredible. Cause you, can you imagine if it absorbed more, like it would be intolerable. Yeah, well, then they would just you know not put as much in it, so it's yeah. very expensive. And but and they also do it by a lot of ways that are theoretically able to make something absorb. And most people do it the cheap way, which opens up the basically tight junctions, disrupts the you know the mucosa, and allows it in. And I'm sorry, my patients already have that problem. I'm not doing Dangerous that game. Yeah. Yeah, so um, so it's it's tough, and just doing stuff sublingual, uh, you know, it's they, you know, show me the study that it works, show me a study, you know, and and people are doing that all over the place. So or the patches, try to get it through on a patch. We have tried with electrophoresis. It's like these patches are just forget it. Well, I, I tried the, um, I, I tried the NAD electrophoretic patch and you want to see a crazy reaction. <laughs> you could have, you could have like branded me with a hot iron and you wouldn't have gotten a worse result than what that electrophoresis patch did to my arm. Well, what, what, what which one was it? It was an NAD. It NAD was, patch. It was an NAD patch. Yeah. But, I mean, any, any D is going to be easier to absorb, but I'm not saying it, you know, uh, it works for a lot of people. It just, for me, it, it caused a crazy reaction. You yeah. Know? It's probably something in the, um, maybe know, the, the solution or who knows. Um, okay. So back to our, our TV four frag with the one, the last question I want to ask you about that one is, is it also as effective for musculoskeletal healing as the full TB four, or does that get left out of that fragment? Yeah. No, we, we have it again. It we give it function. Yeah. We, we give it at the, uh, conferences or friends and family take this. And we usually combine it with BPC. The problem is I, I give everyone, you know, BPC, TB4 frag and KPV. And then they go, Holy crap. I've had this for 10 years and it's gone, you know? Um, and, uh, so it's, but even just giving BPC uh, works. Yeah. Know. No, BPC on its own, it, it is, it's quite amazing when you give someone BPC for their, I don't know, for their heartburn or some kind of GI thing, and they come back to you a week or two later and go, is it possible that it did something for my shoulder? Because I've had this shoulder yeah. problem. No, it here. is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's, it's like a game, right? It's like... <laughs> 
No, it is. And if, if you have uh, GERD, open up the capsule and put it in and uh, it, it uh, seems to work, work better as well. Yeah, I like, I'll, I'll have people put it in with aloe vera, the gel. Just yeah. have it kind of ooze down and slow it down a little bit. Or like we have people with eosinophil esophagitis, horrible, horrible illness. Yeah. And we'll put in a lidocaine gel and just kind of let it, oh, yeah. just let it uh, uh, drip in. Yeah. And they're all, you know, mitochondrial boosters. Um, and, you know, we talked about the hangover. It prevents a hangover. Take too much, it will prevent you from getting drunk. So that's um, the PPC now, right? Yeah. 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 And it, it actually... Uh, will prevent an overdose of most every med. It just, if it's too much, it lowers it. If it's too little, it, it raises it. Yeah, it protects from NSAIDs, right? So I've had people who were addicted to NSAIDs and they were destroying their guts. Um, yeah. And yeah. you just keep them on the BPC, if only to mitigate the and disaster. The nice thing is both of those uh, basically protect against neurotoxins, mycotoxins, um, all those things and EMFs. Right. So, all right. Well, like, because EMFs, that's the bolt gated, the calcium yeah. panels. Yeah. So they do a number of things. So they'll stimulate now normally like natural EMFs from the sun, from light bulbs, from whatever they shoot out EMFs in multiple, like basically 360 degrees. Now, when you get an EMF from a uh, artificial source, like, you know, from Wi-Fi, it's in one direction. So they, and then you get an EMF from another thing and it's, so now you have an additive wave and it may be huge mm -hmm. and it's AC electricity. So it's causing it to oscillate. So what it does is cause all your charged, uh, molecules in your body to go like this and they activate the calcium channels um, in your cells, which then floods the body uh, with the cells with calcium causes, you know, tons of reactive oxygen species, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction. It goes along with stimulating the uh, cell danger response with mitochondria. Okay. And so BPC will stabilize that calcium channel. Um, yeah. So, so let me ask you this. How do you, how do you work with BPC with your clients? Do you have them take it in cycles or do you keep them on it in debt? Like it sounds to me like just on this EMF discussion alone, people should be taking it with their fish oil in the morning. Like, I mean- No, I, that's like, the thing. Do you, and do I, you have I people hate... take it in cycles or do you just, do you like, do you take it every day? Not, not that we're telling people what to do, but even though yeah. you're a doctor, well, but you can't, you're not gonna give people advice without con consulting I'm, them. But. I'm basically do as say, not as I do, because I do everything wrong. I eat Skittles for breakfast and, <laughs> and don't sleep and, I work out, it's my passion. I work out religiously every four months for eight minutes. Nice. Um, and uh, so I, I don't feel like I should be telling people how to live their life, right? But it's kind of like the health coach living in their basement of their parents' house, like telling people how to live. But um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that it's, it will protect you from so many things. And like, um, I know you're big in autophagy, like TB4 mm -hmm. is great for autophagy, TB4 frag, great yeah. for autophagy. I just posted um, a paper about that actually in the group. Oh, and as are, I love flavonoids, you mm -hmm. know, and if I set is my favorite, you know, when you look at some of the studies about 10 times as potent, um, but it's, it's a, it, it's a uh, big issue because you have all these cells that are senescent and they're around where their mitochondria suck. So they don't have enough energy to die. Yeah. And so you give, you know, TB4, BPC, they're all mitochondrial boosters. So they'll actually give them enough energy to die. To take themselves uh, out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And flavonoids as well. And flav flavonoids do, you know, 
so much and you know, also stabilize DNA and, um, and, and they just do so many things and you can't find like a, a negative issue, you know? Right. So that's a way to answer without answering. Yeah. And, and the yeah. one thing too is um, people will bring up, well, cancer. You'll and angiogenesis. See, yes. Yeah. So you'll see TB4 high around cancer cells. Um, but a couple of things, it's kind of like going and seeing fires and Hey, these firemen are always there. They must be causing fires. They must yeah. be starting fires, but, um, also cells will cancer cells will secrete their own TB4 and which is a little different. And they'll also secrete polyphenols. So if you look at polyphenols, they're soup, they're very high in cancer cells. So, but they're very anti-cancer. And also with the angiogenesis, okay, let's name a couple other very potent angiogenic substances. Uh, vitamin D, okay. Uh -huh. um, hmm. yeah. When's the last time I heard of that causing cancer? Uh, a bunch of milk peptides, uh, you know, lactoferrin, mm -hmm. uh, which boosts the immune system. So it's, you know, it, it's one of those things where it's like, well, it does this, so it, it must. But you can't heal if you don't have angiogenesis. So, but if somebody has an active cancer, would you advise them caution? Or would you believe that the body would somehow regulate? Um, there's medicine and there's medicine, medical legal medicine. Um I would not give it to them, not because it's the right thing to do. I would take it myself. I would take it. I would have my parent, my parents, or but uh, family, loved ones, whatever, take it. But they'll get some attorney look at a study and shows it's high in cancer, and oh, you're you know, and the medical board, whatever. So it's uh, I'm very comfortable giving with cancer. Um, but would I do it? Depends on the patient because yeah, it's the gray zone. Yeah. That I, I don't, there's no evidence that it increased cancer. In fact, they look at studies with, um, uh, um, uh, not melanoma, uh, colon cancer, uh, multiple myeloma, multiple myeloma. Actually, uh, I was that one. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. With M, M, uh, sounds like. Uh, like, yeah. is, is totally suppressed, you know, multiple myeloma. And the problem is there's not that many studies in this stuff because there's no patent. So there's no drug yeah. company yeah. producing studies. And, you know, we're going through some drug trials and going to do some ones to make them drugs, uh, which I hate being part of that whole, like, it's like, it's like joining the dark force or whatever, but, um, but if it's a way it, to ensure people can have it, then. Yeah. And in the way that the FDA is going about, you know, if something, and my pharmacy attorney told me 10 years ago, he said, if something is safe and effective, uh, they will find a way to ban it. Yeah. Well, and we're done. Well, um, you know, I think it, it frighteningly sees, sounds like we're starting to see that, unfortunately, with peptides. There's a lot of pressure on the industry right now. Yeah, California, we're having a hard time getting anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of your big compounding pharmacies just bailed out completely on peptides, right? I know, and I was the one who, they knew nothing about peptides, and so uh, I got them going, and then that, and a weird circumstance happened, which, and California has like their own FDA, they have their own, you know, want to help the homeless instead of like coming after doctors to yeah. help patients. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, there's one last one we're going to talk about that I have sitting on my shelf that I tried for the first time this morning. I think it's <laughs> really. <laughs> I think I was, I was wondering why you, why you were twitching and your head was going around. <laughs> No, are you kidding? That's why it's nine o'clock at night and I'm still going strong. Um, and that's Cerebropep which is a really, it's a very exciting compound, right? It's, a, it's, it's been a peptide that's been notoriously hard to get. Um, 
in North America, it's tough to administer. I think it's uh, it's either an IV or intramuscular injection usually. Yeah, yeah. Um, but amazing for nerves, amazing for the brain. Like it has some really interesting properties. Yeah, so um, cerebral license been around uh, 40 years plus, um, approved uh, as a medication in Europe, especially the Eastern Bloc countries, um, typically given IM or IV, lots of studies on Alzheimer's, um, and but in the US, they banned it saying it's a biologic. And they've been a little secretive about their formula. And for instance, they'll list just the amount of amino acid percentage on, on everything. So you got to do some serious digging and finding people involved with it to find the formula. But they're very small, more like the weight neuropeptides. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of studies on oral delivery and shown within a minute to change EEGs. Um, and we've been having great results. We have a lot of studies showing the bioavailability. And as I mentioned, like, so even with TB4 frag, so we came out with it and we're like, should we say what it is? Because we want to give the studies, but as soon as we do, we know it's going to be copycats. So, but I said, look it, we need to show people the studies. So we did. And I know of at least four people that came out with it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, you gotta, we do a ton of work and, and mm -hmm. you gotta be able to make some money. So with this one, we're kind of hiding the studies. I mean, I love to give them, but they're, they're great. I mean, it's totally orally available. Um, and, uh, even if you do a PubMed search, you, you can find. And, and really, because we figured that, especially with the brain peptide, you take it and you're going to see if it works. Like, and, and say, well, show me the study on bioavailability. I can show you, like, it's totally bioavailability, the bio, bioavailable. But if it doesn't work, who cares? Right. You know? right. So take it. If it works, my sense is it's absorbing. Um, so that's what we've had, you know, just great response. We haven't had it that long and my girlfriend will kill me, but, uh, one of our sons was getting really kind of funky, like really kind of up and down a little nasty and, uh, hope they don't watch us. But, uh, and so we, we gave him this, I gave him the cerebral pep and his brothers are like, Oh my God, he's back to his old self. And then he's bragging about his memory and all this stuff. So uh, it, w it was nice, you know, kind of when it, when it hits home. You yeah, know? no, it's quite something. So cerebral lysin, I've, um, I've heard a lot about also how it can help with nerve pain. Does this formula seem to do that as well? Or it hasn't been out long enough to really? Yeah, you know, to be honest, the studies are there. Um, but so does TB4. You look at yes. nerve regeneration and BPC. I mean, they all work for traumatic brain injury. They all work, um, which, you know, all these football players should be taking it. No um, yeah. You know, thymus and beta 4 is banned, uh, but I don't BPC believe. Also, or no, BPC isn't. Uh, I don't think BPC is, but. The frag we use is not the test that they're able to find it, but I shouldn't say that. But, um, uh, and then even KPV, I mean, anything, you know, um, uh, would, will, uh, will work. But the studies are there, but we have not, I don't think I've, I've, I'm trying to think because I don't see that many new patients. Mm -hmm. So I don't know the feedback. I have to directly go to the doctors and say, have you seen this? Uh, I just, like uh, see it third hand, like people even at the conferences, like, uh, and I typically hear it when it's like a day later. Right. You know, like, I think oh my God, would, my nerve pain's better. Yeah, it would be interesting with something like a, I don't know, sciatic pain or something to to see if it had an effect. Although the KPV would probably help just by means of reducing inflammation. Oh, so it reminds me, if you don't want me mentioning, so we're coming out with a new product in two weeks, which is, um, from a separate company, Peptogenic, 
which is a stem cell cream with peptides in it. A stem and, cell cream? What does it do? And so, you know, there's a bunch of stem cell uh, creams out there, but they're just so weak. And so I met this guy who had a stem cell company, but if you name like the top 10 stem cell guys in the world, um, he, this guy had a lab and he was producing uh, stem cells at basically a hundred fold concentration and trying to sell it. It was like $10,000 a CC, right? Yeah. And so he didn't sell anything. Shocking. So that, that, yeah. So he called this guy in and said, can you sell this stuff? And he goes, yeah, you got to do blah, 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 blah. Then he made him CEO. So uh, I talked to him and then he goes, yes, let's make a cream that's a thousand times as potent. And I said, look at, look at the center, a bunch of like presentations on the synergy of peptides and, and stem cells. And I said, let's put these in it. So we had basically samples at the last conference we just did and people are coming down with pain and he rubs the cream on and they come back and they're like, I can't, my pain's gone. Like, what'd you do? They accused them of hypnotizing them and, uh, and also work. So we're going to do. Start coming to your conferences. (laughs) Yeah. And he had a line, he had a line like waiting for him uh, because like, please give, give me some of the cream. And, and it's $200 a bottle. So it's not the cheapest stuff, but it has so much stuff packed in it. And even these peptide creams that you see, right? It's tiny amounts. I mean, so this has stuff, like I wouldn't do it unless there was like, like decent efficacious doses. And um, people, they always bought like two bottles and they came back and bought two more and then two more and five bottles. He was like a celebrity at the, at the damn conference. And so it's, um, a, it's an analgesic cream. It's well, that's what he was using it for, but it's also, it's the, you know, we're going to tweak the formula a little bit for anti-aging. I mean, you know, for wrinkles and, and so many different specialty, but it'll be different versions. We actually have some unique peptides that no one has um, that are amazingly absorbable and hugely potent and, uh, also not extremely expensive because that also weighs in the factor, right? Like I love, uh, humanin. I don't mm-hmm. know if you heard that. It's a mitochondrial peptide, yeah. but it also, it does so many things, you know, insulin resistance and, uh, it will reverse abnormal, uh, protein folding, which I love basically about the, uh, your, the, the sperm product. <laughs> uh, you just uh, you can't handle that word. Yeah. Yeah. Spermidine. Um, yeah. Spermidine. And you know, uh, spermine, you know, when it was discovered when 330 years ago, well, no. So you listened to that podcast with Leslie Kenny, right? Like a lot of this stuff came out of these ancient Japanese scrolls yeah oh i didn't i heard her say that but i i was like doing some research on oh, it and yeah, it said well. yeah I discovered 330 years ago i'm like wait what the hell did they have microscopes you know yeah it's like um but i yeah i really uh, like that and it, it it mirrors you know kind of kind of the peptides um yeah and 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 what what they do and really no downside to the blood brain barrier i'll check more into that but again it was one small study but uh it, so i have some on order but i haven't gotten it yet for that by the way your spermidine yeah oh we can get a rush on that don't worry <laughs> <laughs> It'll come. And, so, and i don't know so this a friend of my girlfriend said oh yeah i use it every day i've done i said no, I'm talking about a supplement called spermidine. <laughs> okay, back to the human. End. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can edit saying. that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You were saying about the human. End. Uh, yeah, it autophagy, it misfolded proteins, and so are yeah. you going to make a supplement or a cream with it? But no, it's just too expensive. Yeah, 
It's crazy. And it, it's also a very large uh, peptide. Right. It's like um, the Mod SC, right? It's, it's, um, they're, they're psychotically expensive peptides. Yeah. And they're so not, like, yeah. like um, you can get it at like peptide science and stuff, but it's like a dose. The cheapest I found was like $20 a dose, you know? Yeah. Which, but, you know, if, if it addresses a really serious issue, is not so and bad. And so, frankly, it's a lot cheaper than if it was coming out of a big pharma company. I mean, CanLab makes it too. Yeah. And you know, tell him if he can raise the dose, raise the vial and get it cheaper. But uh, it's like we had our IT guy die of Jakob Kruzfeldt's disease, you know, like mad cow, but it wasn't from mad cow. Um, and I went over to help him. And his sister said, you're not experimenting on him, are you? He's not a rat. And I'm like, well, there's, they sent him off to die. He's going to die within weeks. You don't want me using things that are not FDA approved for this because there's nothing like he's not a rat. Like, okay. Yeah, people get, get crazy. I had, um, yeah. I mean, it's like you see people with ALS and sadly who just, you know, the system oh. gives them no hope. And there are, I mean, I know of a couple of practitioners who will work with ALS patients with very high doses of these crazy protocols of peptides, but they're slowing that bugger down. Oh, we have ALS stopping. patients that came in a wheelchair. They're jogging now. Yeah. yeah. And then we had one guy come in and we find stem cells help and that the guy who I'm working with, with the peptide said he will give him a hundred thousand dollars worth of peptides of, of stem cells for free. Um, and he talked to his doctor. He goes, the doctor said, no, that, that's not going to work. I wouldn't do it. Uh, I'd wait for this clinical trial and the clinical trials on pep, uh, on stem cells. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so he actually laughed, said, no, we're not interested. And then, I heard he is called back, which we figured would happen. Um, but we've had very good success with it. And ALS is actually, I'm not saying this is the sole cause by any means. Um, it's all infective. Uh, in fact, I've never seen a person who wasn't uh, Borrelia, Babesia, mostly Borrelia. But uh, it's the number one neurodegenerative disease associated with EMFs. EMFs. Now, what do you, one last question, actually, because we're going to start winding it up, but what about heavy metals? You haven't talked about that much. Are you finding, because I know a lot of people talk about people having heavy load of heavy metals in their tissues as a contributing yeah. factor, which, which plays in with the infective yeah. agents. It, it totally in. does. And you, everything's multifactorial. Yeah. And some studies show that heavy metals by themselves did not cause, at least this one interesting study, did not cause autoimmunity. It was in a um, mine in Africa. But if they had malaria, then they got autoimmune disease. So like in the setting of use of heavy metals, you're fine but it's kind of like everything. But now if you add in a chronic infection, you're going to get increased, you know, uh, all this oxidative stress, mm -hmm. uh, immune dysfunction uh, and all these things. And also like you look at autistic kids, like they don't, you look at their year and like, well, they don't have heavy metals. They're not secreting it. Uh, and they have mitochondrial dysfunction because your mitochondria, you need enough energy to kick the metals out of the cells. Yeah. So it's kind of that chicken or the egg. Well, why they collect so much heavy metals? It's because their cells don't have enough energy to get them out. Yeah, and it's caught in their tissues, which is why they're not peeing it out. Yeah, yeah. Like it's all trapped in the tissues. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah, so it's one plus one equals 10. Yeah, and it's also kind of like, I remember I was on a, a SIBO podcast and I said, well, well I think SIBO is more of a symptom. And oh my God, he wanted to just shut me down right there. <laughs> um, but it is, it's like the gut brain axis. Like if you treat people for SIBO and don't do anything else, it's going to go right back to SIBO because the gut brain axis is, if you have systemic illness, it's going to go back 
to the way it was and make the environment, you know, conducive to, you know, all these bugs, you know, and uh, pathogenic bugs. And for instance, Rabar is a uh, well-known GI doc, speaks a ton uh, on chronic uh, multi-system illness. And if you have a, uh, you know, a methane producing bug, he immediately sends them for a Lyme workup. Hmm. So it's like the Lyme basically sets the, the stage for that methane producing bug to kind of. Yeah. So it, it affects the gut. So then you get that, you know, the particular bugs allowed to, to grow. And what's interesting with the whole microbiome, which like BPC really helps. It's interesting. The mic, a good um, microbiome to grow, but you know, this, the microbiome is very complicated, right? And I did a deep dive trying to find the best probiotic. And it's like, oh my God, because every study is multiple of them. But if you think of that, what now it even goes exponentially um, complicated is the microbiome. Mm -hmm, The biome, yeah. and, And like bacteriophages. So bacteriophages are viruses that are very specific to bacteria. They won't hurt human cells are very specific. So it's a great way uh, to kill infections. And we'll use them in our practice for sinus infection, gut infections. You can get them over the counter in the Eastern block. Uh, they're, they're very specific. And it's in, there's, there's one test for Lyme through Red Labs that looks for the bacteriophage of Lyme instead of the Lyme because there's thousands of times more and they can detect it easier. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's not a bacteriophage that kills Lyme. It incorporates into it, but then it also allows it to now be more virulent and all uh, all this stuff. And I was amazed when I I was reading the study on, there's one that let's say your butyrate level gets too high, which -hmm. which is good. I mean, you know. Butyrate's uh, a good thing, yeah. Yeah. And, but if it gets too high, it turns on this bacteriophage and kills that bacteria that's making the butyrate. So it's just, they've totally evolved with us. And so, and we, I go to a number of bacteriophage conferences and uh, there was a, a lecture on funding and there's all these companies that are doing some amazing things, but they can't get funding to go. And it was on, you know, funding. So you think he's going to say, well, this is how you do it. He goes, just forget it. No one's going to fund you. <laughs> because it just, it, it's crazy, but uh, it, it's really neat. And in fact, one of our kids got, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the real story was, but I got a story of what uh, just smashed his foot was just, bleeding and i just said here and take put these bacteriophages in there and cleared it up immediately um it's uh very cool but there are a couple of places are trying to commercialize it but it's just so much resistance you know we're an antibiotic uh medicine medical system which yeah i mean that's not gonna last though because the antibiotics are they're waning yeah yeah and side effects too yeah yeah, no, that's the other big group of people that I see are floxies, people who've been, I, I just can't believe that those antibiotics are still allowed to be used. Like, Oh, yeah, I stopped like people. 10 years ago. Um, and, I, and, and you know what? People didn't have the problems that they do now. So I think it's, you know, it's an oxidative reaction. I think it's because they have all these other issues that they didn't have. But I agree. I won't use them uh, yeah. because you can devastate someone with them. Oh, it, even it, though they're great, they work well. No, but, but it destroy, I've seen, I've met people who've literally been dest- like they're destroyed, and years I, later they're trying to. I I totally agree, and I I last time I used, I gave it to a person. Uh, I don't know, I think ten years, maybe even longer than that, and had so many side effects, and it went away. Thank God. Mm-hmm. But right there, I said, forget it. You know, yeah, this is done. All right. Well, listen, um, you're an easy guy to talk to. Doctor. <laughs> it's I been an hour. I would have guessed 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think 
I, I, it's, it's, let me see, it's 930 now. I think we started talking a long time ago. <laughs> so, and let's, let's just like keep going. Long. Yeah. Well, I think, I think we're going to, you know what we can do? We can do another episode. How's that? When you, uh, um, Come out with your sounds next, good. And your next yeah, I, I talk good. more than this at someone comes up to me at a party. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, why don't you tell people where they can find you? Um, and well, I, try to, I try to hide, but, yeah, I know, um, but. <laughs> uh, no, so we have integrated peptides, um, integrated peptides.com where we have we spent way too much money in FDA attorneys and talk to the FDA to make, um, certain peptide supplements that are orally bioavailable. Yeah, they're amazing. Um, Actually, we have a promo code for people, which is Longevity10 oh, oh. that they can use. So Longevity10, and that'll get them 10% off their purchase at Integrative Peptides. And so that's where they can get Cool. Yeah. Frag TB4. Yeah. Uh, TB4 Frag. And then we have TB4 Frag Plus, which, which adds a bunch of natural um thymic peptides oh. so uh we find it works a little a better but if you're vegan uh don't do that one we have the kpv which we're very excited about yeah uh, and it's just been doing oh, some kind of amazing things and then the cerebro pep which is basically um i don't know if i'm even supposed to say the the name or they made sous the uh, neuropeptides starts rhymes with uh, heredromycin. Um, but uh, uh, and we're again, it's these just came out. But we have so many things in the pipeline that have just been, um, you know, kind of delayed. COVID didn't help. Uh, the studies take a lot longer than than you, than you think, but. All right. We test more than any compounding pharmacy, any, you know, we test more than the drug companies, but um, so we're excited about it because peptides changed my life and has changed my practice. So it's amazing. Okay. So it's integrative peptides. And then for your clinics. Yeah. Is at whole torf med H O L T O R F M E D.com. Yeah. And then uh, there'll be peptogenic dot com, which I, I'm just amazed at, you know, we put this together thinking it's going to work, but the test runs have been like, like nuts. Uh, uh, so that should be out in like two weeks, but, uh, you know, add by the middle topics. of April. Yeah. So it's like we had a peptide company and selling injectable. I, they said, when are you, you going to get this? And they he said, please don't tell me two weeks. <laughs> yeah. So uh, peptogenic, is that P-E-P-T-I or O-G-E-N-I-C? Uh, Peptigenic.com. It's just okay. a splash page right now. Okay. Um, but yeah. And but we already have a bunch of orders from people from the conference. Yeah. I don't know. I, what, I didn't go to the conference, but I might have to place an order. Just uh, no, I'll, I'll uh, email me. I'll, I'll send you some to try. Okay, cool. Amazing. All right. Well, uh, Dr. Holtorf, this has been an utter pleasure. And we are recording on March the 22nd, which is the night before the Peptide Summit second version comes out, starts tomorrow. So thank you so much for your time. Hey, I love, love speak with you. And I just think you're amazingly smart and your willingness to share all your knowledge is uh, commendable. Doesn't, doesn't fit. I mean, wow. uh, thank you from all the sick people in this world. Well, thank you. Thanks for all your work and uh, for all that you do. Great. A lot of lives. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks a lot. Had fun. Thanks so much for joining me on this episode of the biohacking superhuman performance podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to leave us a five-star review on iTunes because that's what helps us to be heard and to be seen. If you'd like to connect with me directly or if you'd like to leave any comments or if you have any questions about this episode, please reach out to me directly through my website, mattnidham.com. And of course, if you're not already a member of the Biohacking Superhuman Performance Community on Facebook, 
That's where you'll find me every day. It's a short application. Just answer a couple of questions and you're in and interfacing with other amazing biohackers. Thanks again. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode.